Welcome to Nomad PHP Lightning Talks. I'm Joe Ferguson. If you would like to give a 10 minute lightning talk, please email me at joe at nomadphp.com. Right now we have Ben Edmonds and he'll be talking about secure PHP. Please make sure you visit Joined In after the talk and leave Ben some feedback. Ben, take it away. Hey everyone. I uh, appreciate you joining us tonight. Hopefully I can uh, teach you a little something and get you out of here on time. So tonight we're talking about secure PHP. It's a lightning talk. This is uh, the first lightning talk I've ever given, actually. So either it will be way too fast or way too long. Let's see what happens. Who am I? I'm Ben Edmonds. Ben Edmonds on Twitter. I do a little bit of open source work. I have a book on secure PHP. Do the PHP Town Hall podcast with Phil Sturgeon. And I'm a CTO at Mindfulware. I don't know if anyone can still hear me. Looks like my slides are locked up. Uh, we can still hear you. Oh. Um, I'm not able to advance slides. Just say slide when you want to slide to advanced. All right, that'll work. All right, slide. Whoa. All right. So uh, first off, we're going to start talking about exceptions and the first step to securing our PHP application. Next slide. All right, so one big issue you're going to run into whenever you either go to, you know, let's say you're trying to figure out how to hack some code or you're trying to figure out what someone will do to hack yours. One big problem most code, sadly enough, has is execution paths. So that means when something happens that the program doesn't expect, how is that handled? In PHP, we have exception handling. And it is uh, sadly not used near as much as it could or should be. So here's a little example. How you would handle this is you just do a try block and then you put your code in there. So that could be you know, a PEO database connection or a Twitter post or whatever you're going to try to do with your code. If this constructed properly, it should return an exception and then you can catch that. So you catch that and then you're gonna have code in that catch block that's gonna tell it what to do. Most likely, There'll be some cleanup, you know, maybe you log that to some type of logging service or to your file so that you can check it later. Maybe you send yourself a text message saying, hey, something really bad's going on with my server, I can't connect to the database. It's up to you to determine what the exception path is, but you do need to handle what happens when the unexpected happens. Next slide. Uh, one more. All right, next up, we'll talk about PDO. Next slide. PDO is a database connection manager for PHP. It's built into the language. It is cross-system. And right now, it supports a wide variety of uh, database systems, uh, relational database systems, of course. It has uh, safe binding is the main feature I'm going to bring out tonight, which is how you bind your parameters into your queries so that someone cannot easily SQL inject into your code. Next slide. All right, so here we have an example of a statement. We're going to prepare it. So here we're just doing a select all from users where ID equals colon ID. So that colon ID is telling it that we want to put a variable into this place. It's not, you don't actually reference the variable there, so you wouldn't want to, you know, tack it on the end of the string. What you're going to do is that next line, bind param. I'm going to tell it whether you see this ID, you're going to replace it with the actual variable ID. They could be named anything. And then you just execute your statement. That is going to go in, it's going to replace that ID. So your actual query would be select all from users where ID equals whether your ID variable was. Ideally, you would already validate it that ID variable, you would know it's, a, it's an integer or it's a valid number, whatever your IDs match. And then by passing that in, you prevent it from being injected. So someone can't just go change a string in your, your form post or in your URL and let that 
take them to different execution paths. So the traditional SQL injection attack is you replace this ID with a semicolon and then you change, you know, delete all, delete from users and you lost all your users. In this case, you're binding that parameter, so that's not possible. Next up is escaping output. So it's not enough just to escape the input when it comes in. You also need to escape it when it comes back out. Your go-to method for that in PHP is going to be HTML entities. And basically anything that you took in from a user should be escaped before it goes back out to the screen because you don't know what state that data was when it came in. That could be a JavaScript tag. It could be an image or a link to somewhere you don't want your users to go. HTML entities will encode that properly so that it's not displayed as HTML when it's set back to the screen. HTTPS and SSL. You uh, Hopefully you know a little bit about this, but just in case, it encrypts traffic across the wire. So that means that it's an ending encryption and anyone eavesdropping on that can't see what's going on in between unless they have the access from each side. It's a trusted sender and receiver. And it's uh, gaining in popularity a lot, at least from what I see, due to OAuth 2. It now requires it, so you don't have any crazy triple hops to figure out your tokens. You just have back and forth because you know your data going across the wire is secure. Passwords are now built into PHP. So we have this nifty little password hash, and then we just pass in the string of the user's password. Then we have password verify. So we pass in that string the user typed into your login form, and then the second parameter is the password from your database. That will do all the magic for you. Right now it uses bcrypt to handle the encryption, which is the uh, most recommended and safest encryption that we know of right now. It will handle the encryption, it will handle the salting using unique salts, and it's pretty, uh, you know, pretty transparent to you, and you know your passwords are handled safely. Authentication a lot of times gets thrown in with passwords, but they are... Authentication is making sure the user has access to do whatever they're trying to do. Most of the time, that's going to be just checking to make sure they're in a certain group or they have a certain level of access control list to make sure that no matter what happens in your system, that user should be able to do it. It's not enough to just assume that if the user gets to a certain URL that they can't do this. Because even though that URL might not be displayed, unless they have access to it somewhere else, a user could guess it or they could find it out somehow and then just go type it in. You can't either be guaranteed that a user won't get to a page that they weren't supposed to. So you have to check that everywhere that you're doing something that requires a certain level of access. Another thing to bring up with authentication on your login, you really need to track login attempts. So that means if I try to log in you know, five times, it's going to block me for so many minutes. That prevents uh, most brute forcing attacks as long as you use uh, you know, decent values. It'll keep your site safe because it is trivial to uh, you know, throw in somebody's email address and then try 5,000 logins to see what their password is. Most people use passwords from a very small list, and uh, that is a minimum you can do to protect your users. Safe defaults, this is another issue with execution paths. So you might be using a variable in a loop. You can't assume that it's going to be something at the end of that loop. You need to make sure it's that every time when you start. Um, the case here is we want to make sure that something equals false before we go into this loop. Because if we end up back here and the loop had already ran without that something equals false at the top there, we don't know what that value would be when we start. Always use a safe default. Let's go through a couple popular hacks to end this up. Popular hacks, and I'm using uh, air quotes here, which you uh, probably can't see. Non-persistent XSS, and that is a tongue twister. The idea of this is that you are going to modify a URL, send it to someone, and then have the site do something they were not expecting it to do. Let's say it's a, it's a delete page that you're not verifying, and that you could just change the 
the ID that's being passed in the URL. Send that to me, I'm logged in, I go to that page, and then I deleted my user, or I deleted someone else's user if I'm an admin. Persistent XSS is the same thing, except it's data that's persisted. So in the past example, you know, it's a one-time use thing with that URL. Persistent would be we somehow get this to save and be redisplayed so that it's used over and over. A good example would be like a Facebook status or Twitter status or anything like that. If you could save that and then link people to, say, that tweet, they get displayed that bad data, and then something happens to their account. There was a recent thing with... Uh, Twitter on this actually, where someone figured out you put in this and then everyone that views that tweet sees this hack. And this one wasn't horrible, it didn't really affect any data, but there have been many cases where it can. To protect against this, pretty much you're always going to go towards HTML entities like we discussed earlier. It's going to just encode your, your data so that it is not parsed by the browser. There are other methods built into PHP. But 90% of the time you're going to use that, and we'll just stick with that for now, because I am uh, running out of time. So uh, CSRF, which is cross-site request forgery hack, is another fun one that a lot of people do. If you have a form that takes in, let's say, a post form, and that form is going to update your user's bank account data or their password, you can't just assume that because the ID is in a hidden field, that that will work. Um, it's very trivial for someone to make a fake page or for someone to get the user to come to that page in some way and post that data and then bad things happen to their account. CSRF is protected by using a one-time use token or a nounce. In this case what we're going to do is we're going to generate this token, we store it in the session data, and then we also put it into our form. Then whenever that form is submitted, we check that the posted token matches the token we had in the session. So this will tell you that this user initiated this post and it's valid. Unit testing. I'd be uh, remiss not to mention it when we're talking about security. It's a cornerstone to ensuring that your program behaves how you expect consistently. It's very easy to introduce an execution path or code that you don't expect into your application at some point in the future. Maybe it's you, maybe it's another developer. But without uh, proper testing, whether that's QA or unit, you need something that goes behind, someone that goes behind you, and make sure that things act how you expect. So PHP unit's very popular now. This is how you would do just a quick test. Test verify, PHP unit framework. You're going to assert that this is true. So in this case, we're just implementing an auth object and then we're making sure that the auth was verified. This is a very basic example, but it's just to show you how easy it could be to write a unit test and to make sure your application produces what you expect. A few resources to finish up here. PHP.net, it's, uh, it's been kept very up to date. It even has a cool new look. And it really should be your go-to for figuring out how functions and methods in the language work. Some modern frameworks that I recommend using, or at least learning from their example. Laravel, Symfony, Slim, which Ed mentioned, Aura, Fuel, Silex, all examples of great modern frameworks. Petri the Right Way is a website and a book that is a very opinionated piece on the best way to write modern PHP applications, and I highly recommend you give it a look. Also, lastly, I'm going to recommend my book because I'm a horrible person, buildsecurephpapps.com. If you use the coupon code nomadphp with that URL down there, it'll save $3. All right, thank you for your time, and do we have any questions? Nope, there are no questions, so uh, thanks for joining us for another Nomad PHP Lightning Talk. If you'd like to give a Lightning Talk, please email me, joe at nomadphp.com. Uh, please make sure you visit Joined In and leave Ben some feedback. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, everyone.